Hello and welcome to episode four of the Donless Days campaign map tutorials. Now, so far in episode one, we looked at basically copying and pasting a mountain on the campaign map. Episode two, we looked at doing the same thing on a battle map. Episode three, we went over how you can actually apply those changes to the AI, meaning that the game actually understands where you've put this mountain on the campaign map. So for today's episode, we're gonna be looking at adding a custom tile to the campaign map, specifically a brand new mountain. So if you haven't seen the previous episodes, I'm sure you'll find a link around here somewhere to go and watch them. And if you're interested in the Dawnless Days Total War mod, you'll be able to find a link to the Discord down below. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is head back to our Total War Attila assembly kit folder. And once you're in there, we're going to head straight to our Binaries Bob folder. In Binaries Bob, scroll all the way down until you can see TED assembly kit, all one word. And when you see that, double click on it. Now this is gonna take a little while to load up, so sit back, relax, get the feet up, close your eyes for a moment, enjoy the ride. Okay, finally, Ted is open. So what we want to do is set up a new tile database for our custom tiles. So we're gonna head up to File, and then look for Tile Database Management. Okay, because it's a campaign tile we're gonna be working on, let's go and change the database to campaign. Good stuff, you can see all of the campaign databases in here of the various tiles. So we want to go down to the bottom and click new tile set. Here you should pick a name for your tile set, I'm just going to call mine Scott underscore mountains. Let's set a new color for this one. The most important thing here is to just select color that you're going to remember or just make sure you write it down. So the red, green and blue values there, 74, 68 and 60, I'm going to write them down on a bit of paper here so I can remember them later. Okay, once you've chosen your color, hit little X, come back to the new tile set and hit OK. And as you can see, our new Scott Mountains data set is now included in the database. So hit accept and let's move on. Okay, so let's actually look at the new tile we want to create. So let's go up to File and click New Tile. For the database, we want to click Campaign, not Battle. For us, I think we're going to leave it here as 8x8. Eight eight. We're going to leave the triangle density and the terrain height as they are, and we're just going to go down and hit OK. Now give it a minute, this is going to load up a new tile for you. And there it is, a beautiful blank tile for us to work on. Now we're going to keep this as simple as possible for now and just make a pretty standard mountain. So what you want to do is head up to the top left and you'll see these wee tabs up here. The third one is called paint, so click on that. Okay, on the left hand side under target you can see it says blend map just now. We want to change that to height map, obviously, so we can make a mountain. Now to make sure we can do this quickly, I'm just gonna change the operation from add, which would obviously add height. I'm gonna change it to absolute. So it's just gonna apply one absolute value across the size of my brush. So if you head over to the right hand side, you can see the little button saying load brush. This is gonna take you into the Attila Total War brushes, where you can choose from all the various weird and wonderful brushes that they have in there for us. Now it's worth saying that you can create your own brushes just as height maps and you can do this in loads of different types of software. I think Gaia is a really popular one. So you might wanna, wanna look that up on YouTube if you can figure out how to spell it. But basically you can create a mountain in those other softwares, export it as a height map and bring it into TED as a brush that you can then make the mountain out of. In this case, we're just gonna keep things simple. So I'm just gonna pick one of the mountain brushes that are already here. Excellent, now we've got a nice brush, let's up the size of it. So we're gonna change the size up to like 150 or something, maybe even higher. Let's go 250, that's about right. You can just about see the outline of the brush on the map when you hover over it. We're gonna change the value of the brush up here to about 75, which is gonna be the absolute value applied across the whole brush. So obviously the smaller the value, the less impact the brush is gonna have on the landscape. And so now if I just click the brush down on the screen, you can see, there we go, a mountain has appeared. Now I'm just gonna check the mountain fits within our nice tile here, which it does. Looks beautiful, looks a little bit weird with those colors being stretched over it, but apart from that, looks fine. 
Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to go up and click on File again and we're going to go to Tile Properties. There it is, Tile Properties. So click on that. Okay, so in here is where you're going to pick the kind of custom attributes of this specific tile you're making. So for the texture groups, I'm just going to copy a tile that I looked at earlier that was from the Alpine Mountains from Attila Total War. So for the first texture, I'm going to choose Climate. Second texture, I'm going to choose Rock B. Third texture, Snow. And fourth texture, let's go Mud A. Excellent. Now for the color in the tile properties, we want to click on the black bar there and we're just going to change the RGB value to the same value that we picked for the tile database earlier on, Scott Mountain's tile database. So that's 74, 68, 60. One thing I noticed in the other tiles that Total War uses, is they had a pretty high normal strength. So I'm just going to up this to 20 and you'll see that it makes a bit of a difference to the actual mountain. Look at that, much more crisp. Okay, and the last thing we want to do just now that we've seen that is I'm just going to go back into tile properties and look at the specific tile. So here in this annoyingly small box, you can see the tile as it will look on your tile map, not including the color. So what we want to do is just to double check, count how many boxes across which are going to equate to pixels on the tile map that the tile is. So we're going to count them up and yes, there is eight across the way and eight down the way. Now just to make this tile a little more specific than just a boring old square, I'm just going to get rid of the corner pieces of the tile, one pixel for each corner, just because we don't really need the square to be that big. So to do that, you select the individual pixel on the tile and over in subtile properties, you can uncheck the valid box. And you can see that just removes that specific pixel from the tile. And this tile's properties are six pixels on the first line at the bottom. Then there's six rows of eight pixels followed by another row of six pixels. So you have to remember not only the RGB value, but you need to also remember exactly what your tile looks like, the number of pixels in whatever direction, because we need to completely match that when we go back into editing the tile map later on. So once you're happy and you've recorded everything you need to, head down and click OK. OK, so one other thing we're going to do just as an example and just for a little bit of fun here is where you see height map in the top left under target, we're just going to change that back to blend map. And we're going to click on the first texture we got there, Climate 0, and we're going to change that to something else. So let's pick Rock B0. We're going to change the size of our brush. Let's just get something a little bit bigger, not that big. That will do for now for this example. And you can see you can then paint on a texture. I'm just going to undo that because it didn't look good. And I'm going to bring down the opacity of the brush just to make it blend in slightly better with the rest of the landscape. And you can see when I paint that on, it's just giving it a slightly more subtle change in the color. I'm just going to move around, paint, paint, paint. Lots of random painting going on just to make this thing look slightly more mountainy. Tell you what, let's go up and change to some snow and just put a little dabble of snow on the top of here. There we go, majestic. That is a finished mountain. It's not finished mountain. You guys spend as much time as you need to making these things look good before you come out here. But just as an example, this will do for now. So what we want to do now is go up to File and then click on Save Tile As. Now you can see here the tile set at the moment is set to Alpine Mountains. We're going to scroll that down until we find R1, which is Scott Mountains, and we're going to click on that. For the name, you can leave it as 8x8. For the variation, I'm just going to call it AA. It's kind of the naming convention that Total War uses for their variations of their tiles anyways. And when you're done with that, click Save Tile. Okay, before we leave Ted, even though you might think that's us done, there is one wee thing I've noticed before here that I just want to check. So if we go up to File again and go to Tile Properties, you can see that the color of our tile looks like it's gone back to being black, which is a problem. So what we need to do is click on that black bar again, change our RGB values back to what they should be, which was 74, 68, and 60, and then exit that and click OK. Now let's go back up to File and click Save Tile. 
So now that we've done that for a second time, if we go into the tile properties now, we should see that the RGB value is correct. Excellent, so let's save tile one more time just to be safe and let's exit TED. Okay, now that we're out of TED, we're just gonna scroll back up in the binaries Bob folder and we're gonna click on Bob Assembly Kit. And this is because I just wanna process these tiles first to make sure there's no issues with them before we go ahead and stick them on the tile map. And again, sit back and relax. It's time for maybe another hot cup of cocoa because we're gonna have a nice long wait for Bob to open up. But by the magic of YouTube, here it is opened instantly. So what we want to do now we're in Bob is to head over to the left hand column and expand the terrain folder by clicking the Wii plus button on the left of it. Then we're going to go down and expand the tile folder by again clicking the Wii plus button next to it. And again do the same thing on the folder called campaign. Now you can see at the top here we've got a nice folder called tile underscore database. So we're going to right click on that and go to view actions. Okay let's make this box a little bigger. So what we want to tick in here is tile slash process the database under the consumer actions part at the bottom. So make sure you tick that box there. And then we're going to exit that. And then we're going to head back to the left hand column, scroll our way down until we find our specific tile database that was Scott underscore mountains. We're gonna expand that folder, expand all the folders in there just to take a little look at what we got. Looks very nice, so click on the Scott Mountains folder, right click on it, and then click View Actions. Okay, so let's expand this box. There's a lot more to look at here, but we're just gonna find a few things to tick. So under Consumer Actions, we're firstly gonna look for Tile slash Create Tile AGF. Then we're gonna find Tile slash Tile. We're gonna tick that box. Then we're gonna find tile slash blend map, take that box. And lastly, we're gonna find tile slash copy tiles to assembly kit, take that box. Once you're done with that, go up and exit this box up on the top right, and then head over down to the bottom right hand side of Bob and click start. Okay, so this one shouldn't take too long to process. You should get a nice green bar like that and the text up on the top left of Bob should be green where it says tile. That means everything went okay, so let's go and exit Bob. So what we're going to do now is go to our pack file manager and we're just going to stick our tiles into our saved pack file. So open it up, go to game selected, make sure you're looking at Attila here. And for us, we're just going to open up our saved file. So we're going to go pack file, open from data, head down and find our Scotland one pack. Okay, so we're then going to click on the folder called Terrain. Well, we're going to right click on the folder called Terrain. We're going to go Add and then Add Folder. Okay, then all we need to do is navigate to our Assembly Kit Working Data Terrain folder. And within that, we're going to click on the Tiles folder just once and we're going to go down to Select Folder. Okay, and that's our tiles added to our pack. So let's just save this pack file. and then we can exit that. The next bit I'm just gonna run through quite quickly because we've done this all in episode one. So if you're wondering about how to edit the tile map, go back to episode one of this tutorial series if you want a more in-depth look at it because we're gonna breeze through this quite quickly. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is basically episode one all over again. So we're gonna head into Photoshop with our tile map found in the raw data, terrain, campaigns, main Attila map folder. Let's zoom into where Scotland is. Let's firstly delete this wee mountain I've made in here. I'm just gonna cover that over with the same color of the tiles underneath. And now what we're gonna do is open up our color picker because we need to match the RGB values to those of the tile that we made earlier on. So if you remember, it was 74, 68, and 60. Click OK. And then if you remember, the box was eight by eight square. So let's just color that in. But also remember, I deleted one pixel per corner. So we're just gonna do that as well. So this tile I've just painted on now completely matches the one that we made in Ted earlier on for the color and the shape. 
So excellent, nice and easy. Let's go up to image, go into mode and make sure we have 32 bits channel selected. Then we're gonna go file and we're gonna export this as a PNG. Let's just save over our current tile map. Yes, we can overwrite it. Okay, then let's close it. Now, again, just like episode one, we're gonna head back to our binaries Bob folder. We're gonna open up Bob. So, hope you're ready for another long wait. Okay, and back to the usual, we're gonna go into Terrain. We're gonna expand the Campaigns folder. We're gonna right click on Main Attila map and go to View Actions. And what we wanna choose is down at the bottom of the consumer actions. For me, it might not be at the bottom when you look at it, but it's the one called terrain slash tile map. So we wanna make sure that box is clicked. Okay, then exit that and let's start the process. Okay, now that Bob is done and dusted, we're gonna again do our usual of opening up the pack file manager. Make sure you've got Attila selected. We're gonna go open from data and open up our nice little Scotland pack. Now if we expand the terrain folder, I'm just gonna get rid of the campaigns folder because we can just bring in the new one. So let's select it, delete. Then we're gonna right click it, go to add, add folder. Navigate to your working data, terrain, and then we're just gonna click once on campaigns and go select folder. And there's our new campaign folders in there. So let's go up and hit pack file and save pack file. Done, now that should be everything you need to get your brand new mountain tile into game. So let's load up the game and see what happens. Now, for some reason, my screen is only recording as core resolution here for in-game, but you can quite clearly see our wee mountain with a touch of snow on the top of it down there in Dumfries and Galloway in the southwest of Scotland. Let's move around, check it out. She looks beautiful, even if she is maybe a wee bit small, so I might have to, to make them a bit bigger next time. But there you go. You've just got your brand new custom tile mountain into Attila Total War. Next thing you'd want to do is open up the KME tool and make sure AI understands where it is, as we did in episode three of these tutorial series. You'd also want to make sure there's a mountain there on the battle tile map, as we did in episode two. So you can go take a look at that just now if you don't know how to do that. And combine episode two with this episode and you'll be able to get there. I hope you enjoyed this speed run of how to add a custom tile into the campaign map and I will see you all next time.